holes are actually for cooling because you have to be able to pull air uh, in in through these and out through there or something but air has to circulate past the commutator it's very important and as you see here it makes a very nice assembly right you got your two clutches two motors two gearboxes two 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 and then this part you see right here is actually anchoring the gearbox because this will torque now the only thing holding the motors in here is this little uh, bolt screw whatever uh, with a washer and that pushes against the oval hole inside the housing that's what keeps it down all the way in but it will not really keep it from rotating through the torque so these anchors essentially this one's not on right now uh, uh, essentially tie into this lug I don't know if you can see that right there this lug right here and uh, that's what tells it okay you're not gonna rotate too much and uh, so I'm going to have plans on how to make these parts, how to run your lugs out through there, how to insulate them so nothing catches on fire and burns up. And that's pretty much that. It's pretty cool, right? Now I'm going to come back and show you the housing it fits in because my video camera battery is about to die. Okay, so I'll be right back. So anyway, this entire housing right here with the two output shafts right here, the motors, the gearbox, and all of this stuff, neatly fits inside of this housing right here. Now these uh, footings obviously is what mounts to the bottom of the vehicle itself. And uh, this entire housing pretty much just slides right in. Kind of looks like you're making a bomb, really, anyway. Right now this lug's sticking out, I don't know exactly why, but I have to investigate that. But this whole thing essentially slides in there, about yay. And from these holes right here, you have your power coming through, and you have your ventilation here, here, and so on, right? Little set screws kind of go in between there to hold the whole thing in place. And the power that comes off of here and here is transferred via these stainless steel shafts. Now, I use stainless steel, you don't really have to, but you kind of get the idea. There's a screw that goes right through the, uh, this stub shaft as well as the output shaft right here. You can see there's a hole through it and it is also tapped. Now this, as far as I can tell, is mild steel. It shouldn't be any problem whatsoever. Now, this uh, is just the uh, the shaft that rotates the wheel. There is actually no weight sitting on top of that because the weight is actually sitting on this hub. The shaft, as you can see, there's a bearing inside, which is most likely rather unnecessary, but the shaft goes through there like this. Uh, the ring on the inside sits just inside here, adds a little extra support for the end. Not as if there's any load there, but it does center it. You can see like that there. And then the wheel, which uh, originally looks like this. Now this is a pedal car wheel right here. Uh, how true it is? Not very true. Uh, it's, it's really kind of a rickety thing. It's all just made out of pressed steel sheet and it creates this glorious thing which kids are supposed to be able to use. And the tire itself, ugh, man that's hard. The tire itself is nothing more than this oversized o-ring or rubber band you know it's that's it and it sits inside that groove by its own tension essentially but like i said these are very lightweight and they're very thin but they are not very true it makes it difficult to actually power a vehicle on a bunch of eggs and so i got rid of those I went to Harbor Freight and I got these previously pink, red, whatever, I don't know, pneumatic tires. These have a two-piece rim. There's ball bearings on the inside. Runs mostly true. Of course, not 100%, you know. And it actually has tread on. It has some width to it. You can get some traction with this and far better handling. And I think they're more efficient, actually, than those things because at least these are mostly round. Now, if you don't like the rims, the nice part about it is you could just unbolt them 
make your own rims, you can change the hub diameter, you can change the bearings, lots of possibilities here. Now, I wanted to use out of the box stuff like the drill motors and so on. And so when I went ahead with that, I made it so that this essentially just fits on top. And then there's a transfer plate that transfers the power from the shaft in the center because this is a full floating hub like you would have on a four wheel drive vehicle or something like that. And essentially it transfers the, the motion from the center shaft uh, to the outside wheel.